All right, are we good? You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for meeting with me. Sorry, we're a few minutes late. I know I was having technical difficulties, so. Yeah, same. <laughs> it's all good. It's, listen, it's almost Friday, so it's fine. <laughs> we just don't move yeah. on to work. But y'all already know who it is. This is William from Ready to Love. Let's introduce, I know. I was nervous. I, Williams, you know, he's in the military. So I was like, look, I'm home. <laughs> uh, please. <laughs> no, nah, we both ran a little late today. <laughs> we got people in the chat already giving compliments. Hey, Christina. She said, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the ladies, look, they want to know if you're still ready to love. We're going to get into it. Let's get into it. All right. So, first, I just want to give a special shout out to Ryan. Um, for connecting us. I know we were, I was trying to get connected to you for a while. So shout out to Ryan. I just want to give him a quick shout out. And yeah, I also up, Ryan? thank you for serving. I know you're in the military. Is it the army? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for serving. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Appreciate what you do out there for us. But we need some icebreakers. You know, I'm waiting for people to come into the, oh, wait a minute. Oh, Lord. Christina. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 She's cute That's too. Hilarious. Okay, I can vouch. <laughs> I can vouch. William is <laughs> handsome, so you know the ladies are coming in. Thank you, Mrs. Bass. Look, look we got the married women Thank coming you. in here. Okay, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's all good, ladies. It's all good. <laughs> Listen, after a rough season, I'm sure it feels good to uh, get some compliments. So. Yeah, it was rough. Definitely was one of the fan faves. We'll, we'll talk about it. So I'll do a few little icebreakers, and then we can jump right in. Okay. Favorite ice cream? Uh, Vanilla. I'm regular. I'm simple. That is basic. Not even butter. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Listen, my family's mad country, so that was it, that was definitely in the house. It I was always the vanilla kid. Ugh, okay, but but you grow now. You gotta like <laughs> your palate. It has to elevate a little bit. I like to keep it simple. <laughs> All right, top five rappers. Ooh, uh, man, it really depends on my mood. Um, let's see. It's gonna be some people you ain't heard of, but you. Um, so Propane. He's from Houston right now. He's he's dope to me. Right, heard of him. Uh. I grew up on Bun B and Pimp C. You know, obviously, you know, I grew up in Texas. Uh, Big Crit. Okay. Uh, Royce the Five Nine. And uh, let's see. I mean, I can't really break up Outkast, but Big Boy and Andre 3000. Okay. See, I only didn't know one. So I'm. I'm, I'm well, I was going to go down a list of a whole bunch of rappers from Texas, but. I just wanted to be everybody Please friendly. Don't listen. Hey, <laughs> everybody in the chat. Listen, we got Miss Misha I am on the building. She's another content creator. She's from Texas. So we got some Texas people with you. They may know a little bit better. I'm an East Coast girl. Yeah. I did know for the most part. I'm proud of, I'm thinking myself a pat in the back for knowing four out yeah, of good five. Good job, you. Good job. <laughs> All right. So you're a comedian. Martin Lawrence or Dave Chappelle? Dave Chappelle. Really? Yeah. Um Dave Dave. Um I mean, no knock to Martin Lawrence. He's dope. And you know, I I appreciate everything he's done comedically. But Dave Chappelle, he's one of those comedians that when I watch him, I'm in awe, you know? Mm -hmm. And like I watch comedy kind of like I used to watch Game Field when I was when I was playing sports. And I just want to see how he got from this premise to like where how did you get like what was your thought process for this and so um dave chappelle is one of those comedians that just really makes me think and he's he's the goat to me the goat okay to, to me between the two i would go with martin martin lawrence had to pave the way so that dave chappelle could step on the scene but see that's the thing about that's the thing about comedy and music it's all subjective so you know everybody's favorite or your favorite might not be my favorite and neither one of us is wrong so true it's good to have different perspectives for sure but you know as the generations go by there's gonna be somebody else and they're gonna be like they for should sure. For sure. <laughs> but, okay but i'm with it celebrity crush oh <laughs> 
I could go down the list on that one. Uh, uh, Alicia Baumgarter, she's a boxer. She's like, I met her a couple months ago. She's up there. Uh, SZA. Um, it's 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 too many. I just listen. <laughs> God knows my heart, but I be lusting. Okay, so. <laughs> 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 so, ain't nothing wrong with it. It's know, a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You gotta tell me. We, we'll, we'll talk. I gotta figure out who was that box you were talking about. I'm gonna look her up because now Alicia Baumgartner. She's dope. She's she's a uh, world champ right now. She's she's a beast. Okay. See, I'm missing out. But look, I'm just now getting on to women's basketball. Like I gotta do one thing. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't keep up with all the. I'm gonna try. I'm a girl's girl. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to get there. <laughs> So are you still active in the gym? I know you said you were big in the gym on the show. Yeah. So, um, man, <laughs> it's funny how they played that scene, right? Because it was actually a, a longer conversation. And I mentioned how, you know, uh, due to some, you know, mental health stuff and my family stuff that was going on, it, it caused me to be out of shape. And I'm used to being very active in the gym. So I'm getting back to where I used to be. Um, unfortunately, I ruptured my Achilles last year. So I'm I'm recovering from that, but I'm I'm trying to get back because the army doesn't like me to be fat. So I gotta try to get try to get my you stuff back together. PT test now. <laughs> <laughs> my dad is in the army, so oh, okay. But how long does it take for the Achilles to heal? Um, let's see. It happened in July of last year, so they said it's like twelve to eighteen months, depending on. Uh, Depending, well, I'm almost 40 now, so it's not like it's going <laughs> to yeah. yeah. We'll see. Just don't don't rush it now, because we don't need you going back and rupturing something else. I can't do it. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> I, can't I don't know do when you're done with the military. Take it easy. I would drag it on as long yeah. as I could. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple years left, so yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not re-injure myself, because it's my second time doing it. So I'm trying. Oh, gosh. Yeah, take yeah. it. But you're in the reserve, so mm -hmm. and I'm too far ahead. I did throw a little shade in one of my reviews because I'm like, I thought the reserve was only one week and out the month. But I wish. <laughs> like you going on more often than that. Yeah, yeah. My job, uh so when people think of the reserves and the National Guard, they usually think like support MOSs and you know, sit around and not do anything. But I mean, you watched my my Instagram, like yeah, you're in I'm, a, I'm a combat MOS. And so we have to be trained to the same level as active duty units, just in case we get called up. So I'm definitely not one week in a month, not two weeks a year. It's way more than that. My, my nine to five hates me right now. So. Yeah. See, and we, cause listen, they was throwing shade. It was like, well, you don't got no job. He like time me off. Uh, of yeah. <laughs> then I was like, no, I, I, <laughs> I saw all of it, but I'm not the type that's like, I don't really care about other people's like strangers' opinions, you know? So I never went out of my way to clear it up. So it was just. Did let you people find think yourself staying out of the comment section when the show was going on? Or did you find yourself looking a little bit more just to see what the people were saying? I looked just simply because I'm going to talk about it on stage, you know? Like it's, you're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> so yeah, I can't. Yeah, to be a comedian, so. Yeah, so, I mean, I can't be around my comedy homeboys or, like, even my friends. Like, we can't be friends unless we can crack on each other. So, I ain't nobody, there's nothing a stranger can say that's going to hurt my feelings because don't nobody really know me. So, I mean. That's true. Okay. Listen, thick skin. All right, well, then, because they in the comments saying, listen, I'm shady. D. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed like he can handle it. He, he's he's yeah, in the right he's in a safe space. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna go too far. <laughs> I do that. I say that for the review. All right. <laughs> so you're from? Are you originally from Texas? I am. I'm, I'm Texas born and raised. Uh, I grew up in San Antonio and Houston, and lived all over the state between college and the military. So, um, yeah, I'm from Texas. Did you have to move out of state at any point for the military or did you stay? Yeah, I, I was stationed in California, Florida, uh, lived overseas for a few years, and I've been to 16 countries at this point. So okay. I probably would have stayed in California <laughs> if I could. I know it's expensive. Yeah, it wasn't really wasn't really an option. 
<laughs> I ain't really had that choice. So now the people want to know, do you know Red from last season? Um, we we know each other uh through social media, and I think I I met him in person at the uh premiere party. But we're we're working on something. We've been we've been communicating, trying to throw a show together, or something like that. But is he funny? You can tell you. I've, I've never I've never seen him work. You know, I've never I've never seen him work, so I can't say. Um, and also, you see him work. What's that? You want to work with him before you find out if he's funny? Listen, I don't care who I'm on the show with. I'm funny, <laughs> so <laughs> um, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I've been on the show with people that aren't funny before, and you know, um, whether whether the comedian before me is funny or not, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't really matter. I just got to go up there and do do my thing. So um, I've been I've come up behind people that were that killed the show and it made me have to work harder um and i've been behind people that were terrible and i had to work hard so i mean at the end of the day i don't care who's on the show just as long as you know right. i'm trying not to cuss as long as there's butts and seats and i'm getting paid i don't, I don't really care it's okay so i normally don't be cussing on my channel but you got to pass tonight. <laughs> <All right. laughs> go ahead <laughs> yeah. okay so as long listen Red said the same thing you said on his mixer, I believe, that he doesn't like to be put on the spot. So I ain't going to put you on the spot. No, see, that's the thing, because people think comedians are always on. You know, like, it's, it's, not, it's not one of those things where uh, I'm always just ready to tell a joke, you know. Um, right. When I'm, when I'm with my friends and I'm comfortable, like, there's nobody who knows me personally will say that I don't make them laugh. But if I'm around strangers, I'm just really quiet and observant normally, so um to be put on the spot be like "Ooh, tell me a joke nobody does that to people in other jobs and so all comedians hate that right to the point where i might not even told anyone i was <laughs> like they're automatic on make me laugh say something exactly funny. like if you if you find out somebody changes oil for a living you're not gonna be like hey prove to me that you change oil so my car's in the parking lot do that for me you know mm-hmm. so but you know when it comes to entertainment it's different because if i say i sing they're gonna be like sing me a song right now Mm -hmm. it's all good listen we gonna have to check out your show say you gotta pay if you want to see me tell a joke at this point i'm i'm past i'm past the meal vouchers and uh chicken strips uh (laughs) part of my comedy career i'm not a big name yet but i do get paid to tell jokes okay and now more people are going to see you because of this show so that is the the plus i hope yeah yeah Now, how was your dating life prior to getting on the show? Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not really outside like that, you know. So, uh, there's there were people that I I dated or have entertained over the past couple of years, or whatever. Um, but I had one serious relationship probably within the last four years. Okay. Um, outside of that, um, between comedy, my kids, and the army. I mean, trying to fit somebody in there is, is tough. So. Now, with that busy schedule, did you really feel like you were ready to settle down? Like, were you ready for it? Because ready to love, that seems like a lot of time and dedication. It is. It is a lot of time. Um, and it's really unorganized. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, it added a lot of chaos into a period in my life that was already kind of not the best but um yeah i mean i'm ready to i'm ready for a relationship um i'm just not actively looking for it anymore at this point you know um if if god sends me somebody and like taps you on my shoulder and like it's her i mean so be it but i'm i'm very comfortable in my in my solitude right now so um there is there is somebody that has my attention at this moment but um i'm i'm not in a relationship okay so we not on hinge looking ladies simmer down no i listen i stay up <laughs> off them sure. i stay up off them date naps i hear too many horror stories i travel the country and hear horror stories from people everywhere it's terrible in every city i'm cool yeah that's the truth but then i feel like it could be terrible when you meet somebody in person i don't know you just never know people are just people go off yes yeah, it's, it's tough like trying to you know discern whether or not you're meeting that real person or their representative. So it's it's Absolutely. hard out here. 
Absolutely. But I feel like it's even more risky with a dating show than a date nap. A date nap, I can be like, you know what? <laughs> but you know what? Um, I'm I'm actually really good friends with the majority of the females, like the women from the show. Mm-hmm. And they are all amazing women. I have nothing negative to say about any of them. Like they they're all dope. So I wish all of them the best. That's good. That's good to hear because we there's been a lot of bashing going on with the, uh, with this particular cast. So I'm glad we don't have a lot of that going on on yeah, your I side. The way. Okay. If you want to know about Patrice, we're gonna get there. We'll they said they don't claim you no dating sites. Now <laughs> married twice before, so you know I gotta ask. Yeah. What happened there? Because you said you married for the wrong reasons, and I said two yeah. times. Two yeah. Times. So your 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 dad's in the army, right? Yes. Ask him about <laughs> ask him about the military marriages. So um my the first time I got married, it was my high school sweetheart. Um we we started dating. Uh I graduated graduated a year early to go off to play ball, and she was a senior in high school. Uh so we started dating at 17 years old. And then uh from that point outside of the summers, we were hours away from each other. Um, and then, you know, life happened. I ended up joining the military, but we're still dating off and on. Uh, she gets to the point to where her, she's a military, she was a dependent as well. And so she was about to lose her insurance and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to move off post. (laughs) And so, uh, you know, we talked about it and, you know, we felt like that was the only way we can keep it was it's dumb talking about it now but that was the only way to like stay together like hey let's get married and then you know you can come out here and be with me type stuff so it between 17 and 22 we hadn't really spent much time together then we just moved in it you know kind of and it obviously didn't work out so that was first time it was uh, it's not um I'll, I'll you're not alone my my yeah. I was 19 and he was, it was the same situation. So you're, yeah. it happens, I know from experience. Yeah. And so the second time um, I had gotten out of the military, I left active duty. Uh, two of my friends got killed in Afghanistan and I had survivor's remorse. And I ended up going back to try to join the military again. But at this point I had two sons and the army told me I either had to give up custodial rights to my parents like i mean to my kids give up parental rights to my kids or i had to be married because they weren't taking single parents in Mm. and so got married to my girlfriend at the time and so that's how i ended up with two marriages for the wrong reason okay and rest in peace to your friends so sorry to hear about that appreciate that okay but then you had so you had the children the two you had were they with the second wife so my old my oldest is with my first wife and then my two youngest are with my second. Okay. So then you had the two and then y'all got married. Well, we had one, we had oh, one, then we got married and had the other one as okay. we were in the midst of going our separate ways. But how did that happen? Yeah. I see what you're saying there. How did that happen with having the having the one? <laughs> <laughs> you were already divorced and had a child. You didn't say no, that. we we weren't we weren't divorced yet we were we were just in a rough patch and um you know we did what adults do (laughs) and then she called me and was like i'm pregnant i'm doing september and that's how i found out i was having my third son but i mean i wouldn't take any of it back because i've been blessed with three amazing sons um they're the best part of me um I obviously wish, wish like the circumstances could have been different, but it is what it is, you know. Yeah, life happens. You try to do the right thing, <laughs> so it wasn't for lack of trying. <laughs> we know how it works. You're not, a, you're not alone in here. There's no judgment going on right now. <laughs> but with the, when it came down to getting on the show, and when you went in dating, do you find it difficult because of having the fact that you have three boys? Do you find it difficult to date? Um, I don't find it difficult to date because the people who are okay with it seem to be the people that gravitate to me. Um, however, I do get a, a lot of unsolicited like people, especially now, hitting me up on social media like, 
uh, do you have kids? And I'll say, yes, you know, I, I'm not a very social person, but I'm personable. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can hold a conversation. And so, um, I've had a couple people ask me how many kids I have. And when I answer that, like, Ooh, that's too many kids. Like I never asked you to be in any of my kids <laughs> lives. Like, <laughs> come on now. You, but, um, I don't, I don't, I don't really have an issue um, with dating outside the desire to do it. <laughs> now, are you open to having more kids now that you look back and. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. They talked about my boy Dominique a lot. Uh, <laughs> Cause he was talking about having 10 kids. Uh, my mom yes. is the oldest of 14. My mom's the oldest of 14. So I grew up with a huge family, you know? And so, um, Am I good with having three sons? Absolutely. Like, if I don't have any more kids, I am fine. But if the person that I um, end up deciding to spend the rest of my life with um, says that she wants a child, I'm not opposed to doing that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm, I'm open. Okay. Because in this economy, listen, <laughs> today's listen. price is a little bit different than yesterday's. I don't know. You ain't never lied. Yes, and they said once you know the context of the situation, it's understandable. It is. We only see but so yeah. much on the show, so that's why it's good. Yeah, they they cut a lot of stuff out. There were a lot of conversations that were had. That's why uh, after it came up one time on the show, nobody ever talked about it again because it was explained. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's why my finances and stuff was talked about after like, and it was never brought up again because it was explained. So. Gotcha. And we'll definitely get to the mixer. I did want to touch on what, what was near and dear to my heart, which was your adoption. You're open about it. Do mm. you, are you comfortable speaking about that now? Yeah. So how yeah. how was your childhood and your upbringing? When did you find out? Um, I've known as far as back as I can remember. Uh, my mom, she was very big on her being the one to tell me that I was adopted so nobody else could like hold that over me. So I, I've known my whole life as far as I know. Um my childhood was I mean I had a I had a pretty regular childhood. Um I don't really know what else to compare it to because it's the only childhood I had. <laughs> but um you know uh did little kid stuff got in trouble that I probably shouldn't have got in a lot of trouble I shouldn't have got in. My parents did their best. Um you know summer times I put was either in basketball camp or somewhere out in the country trying to you know keep my parents trying to keep me out of trouble so uh my mom did her best to make sure i was one of those monday through sunday kind of kids in the church but that wasn't really <laughs> that really wasn't for me but um i mean i had a pretty regular childhood you know and, and do you have any siblings yeah so um my my parents uh without getting too deep into their personal business. They uh they kind of were they had big hearts. My parents had really big hearts. And so, you know, kids who weren't necessarily in the best situations, my parents were always really welcoming to letting them stay with us. Um whether it hurt us or not, like they wanted to help. Um so I have a lot of god siblings, like people that I just call my brother and sister because they grew up with me. Um, they have one biological child, my little sister, um, and then uh, my biological side. I have an older brother, a younger sister, and a younger brother. Okay. And did you ever want to go out and meet them, reach out to them? Because I know you said your your kid. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm super close to my biological family. Uh, we met in 2019, and so we're we're really close. It just clicked like instantly. Good. Good. That's good to hear, especially. With your kids, the more people to love them, the better. Mm -hmm. so, and that's definitely, um, you know, what made you one of the things that made you stand out for me on the show because you were so open to sharing, where a lot of other men, not to bash them, were closed off. So we definitely yeah. appreciate that. Now, what was your process as far as getting on the show? Did you apply? Because I know everybody <laughs> says that they ain't never heard about the show, so they got on the show. Um, I, I had obviously heard of the show. Well, not obviously. I had heard of the show before because I have a friend that was on a past season. Um, but I, I never watched the show. So uh, reality TV isn't my thing. Like, I don't really watch reality TV like that. Um, I watched a couple of episodes to kind of get an idea of what I was getting myself into. But I probably should have watched more. 
Um, but uh, Ryan actually hit me up because um, he knows I don't really get out like that, and he knows I'm, I'm single. So he was like, you live in Dallas? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, uh, there's a show that's casting in Dallas. Uh, you should audition. And I was like, cool. And I didn't even know what I was auditioning for. He just knows I'm a comedian and, you know, whatever. So I, I, I did the little video audition and all that kind of stuff. And they reached out and I did three or four interviews with them before I found out what the show was. Mm-hmm. And um, I was really hesitant to do it. Uh, I had to talk to my mentor and some friends about it to talk me into uh, not being a weirdo about it and just, you know, try something different because my way hasn't worked to this point. So um, I went ahead and signed up and here I am. I mean, that's a big man on reality TV is no joke. Okay, These people will tear you up. (laughs) <laughs> but I'm glad that you, you know, were open. You knew you know about the show. Do we do we know the friend? If people want to know, do we know the friend that was on the previous season? Yeah, she was she was on one of the Houston seasons. Her name's Tressa. She is a stand-up comedian from Houston. Okay. I think it's coming back. Oh, there's so many seasons. I got <laughs> I gotta remember. I think I know who you're talking about. Houston, the Houston seasons were some of the best seasons. So your friend didn't give you any insight on like what was to come with the show? I mean, she just told me to do what I normally do, just mind my business and be myself. And that's <laughs> that's what I tried to do. Yeah, either they're gonna like you or they not. So that's all you can Straight do. Up. So right. okay, so then you apply for the show. Oh, you said they friend zone trust me. Oh yeah, okay. I think I remember JB. Okay, I think I remember. She's she's a comedian yeah. as well. Yeah, she's okay. dope as hell. She's great. Yeah, I, she's I great liked her. Time. I liked her. Okay, so good people. Yeah, she was. She was good. She had the long. Yeah, I remember now. It's coming back to me. Does she still do stand up? Do you still? She, yeah, yeah. She's still in Houston doing comedy. Yeah. See, we got to support our our comedians because I'm tired of seeing the same five people all the time. I want to see some new faces. Listen, it's funny because a lot of the comments that were said about me were like, "Oh, he can't be a comedian. I never heard of him." You know how many comedians there are in this world that you never heard of? Right. You know what I'm saying? All all your favorite comedians at one point in time you never heard of them before. Yeah. Like that's silly. But See, just like, um, Kevin Hart can't take all the all the roles now. We need new people. I mean, he trying. <laughs> he doing. He, he, he trying. <laughs> he gonna be spread thin. We heard it before. We want to hear from somebody else. <laughs> yeah, he's getting all the movie parts, and uh, uh, Dave's taking all the specials. So. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like that, it's, get y'all can spread that money around. Other people need to be supported. Yeah. Uh, to that question that was just asked, I haven't really done a lot of shows in Dallas. Uh, I don't think I've done a show in Dallas since 2018. I travel all over the place. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be in San Antonio tomorrow, and then I got a show coming up in Florida, and I'm actually working on one coming up in Houston. But I'm, I'm trying to uh, work something out in Dallas really soon. Mm-hmm. How far is San Antonio from Dallas? Uh, like four and a half hours. My parents live in San Antonio, so I, I book in San Antonio a lot because it allows me to be there for my parents and um, make, a, make a couple dollars and, you know. Okay. <laughs> JB said far. JB is from Dallas. As well. <laughs> it, it is far. It is. It is. And I make that drive because um, I'm about to go pick up my dog because my parents been watching my dog because I've been going to so many schools and stuff for the Army. So I got to drive. Okay, dogs and Vanessa was one of your connections. Let's let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to ask, how did your sons feel about you being on the show? Uh, I shield my sons from a lot of stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> their mom was watching it, I guess, and my sons were like, "I saw you on TV." But uh, my sons don't really care for me dating. They don't. They don't really want me to date. Not because. Really. Uh, not because they want me back with their mom, but they just, um, my last actual relationship was, it was kind of a hard breakup and, and for them, cause I don't let them meet people and they actually met my ex. Yeah. And so they, they fell in love with her and then the whole breakup thing was really rough on them. So they don't really want me doing that again. And I'm with them. Yeah. So, but eventually it's yeah. like, you know, daddy got to have a life too. Now you can't be single. Forever. Yeah. Unless you want to be, which would be understandable <laughs> with what's going on. Like I said, like I said, there's somebody that has my attention right now, so we're going to see. 
Let's see. We gonna see. Oh, someone wants to know what are your son's ages. Uh, my oldest son is twelve. My middle son will be ten in November, and my youngest will be eight in September. Okay, that's good. Close in age, but certainly understandable with that situation, especially bringing somebody around. That's a big deal. So, and they're still pretty young. Now, when you got on the show, you went through. How long was the process like to get on the show? Uh, I think I auditioned in February or March, and filming started in May. Okay, okay, that's not too bad. So then you got to the mixer. Was there anyone who like immediately caught your eye? Uh, Mika and Koshia were like the first to uh to caught my to catch my eye physically. Um, like I said, they're all dope. It's just you know from that first mixer, I didn't actually have like an actual romantic connection with anybody. Uh, April from the show is one of my best friends now. Um. We cut up the whole day, which is why she said I was goofy, because we just cut up and laugh every time we're together. Um, Alexis so and I con connected on basketball. What's that? Did that comment offend you that we, we found no. out? Okay, I was like, April. No, cause, because me and April sit around uh, at restaurants cutting up on each other like almost every weekend. <laughs> so it that's just what we do. So I'm not I'm not offended by it at all. She just called me Jeffrey in my DMs like probably two hours ago. Like, <laughs> Not like April, but I'm like, see, you got you got thick skin. I love, I love, I love, I love listen, I love April to death. Like if April called me right now, I'll pull up because I, I I rock with April. That's that's the homie for life. Okay, but it was Mika and Koshia physically when you yeah. started to converse with the ladies. Was there anyone's conversation that had you like? uh not romantically um no like i said they're they're all dope but i just didn't have anything like romantic with them so yeah. luckily I, I made it through the first day and got to meet everybody else all your connections seem to have been in the other mixer for the most part yeah. you know, that that makes sense why do you think the ladies felt like you were unstable i know it was like a comedy thing and then you mentioned the firearm business yeah <laughs> yeah so um i don't know and af after talking to them they said like a lot of that was like cut up and taken out of context which is fine um because like i i'm i'm pretty pretty comfortable i live a pretty comfortable life okay. um <laughs> but the the firearms thing again they they chopped that conversation in half uh we know editing always plays a part. They the ready yeah. left pass gonna let us know that they chop stuff up. But it, it did seem yeah. just from watching, I was like, okay, you do comedy. What else is going on? Like you said, now I, I see that you got a lot going on. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I'm just about? like just like half of the other cast, I work in IT. <laughs> okay. Uh I'm in grad school. I'll this time next year I'll have my master's in cybersecurity. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm doing pretty good for myself. I just never cared through the course of the show to clear up what was going on in my life. Like the people who need to know, know. Gotcha. And congratulations on getting your master's. And i will be honest, if I was on there, I'd be like, hey, I'm a content creator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, my nine to five, you wanna know what I do for fun? Mm. <laughs> okay, so you got there, and then when you got to the when you got to meet everyone else, was there anyone else from the second mixer who automatically? Well, we know Maya was like your top connection. Is she the one? Yeah. Got your attention. Uh, <laughs> when I walked in, I saw a blue dress and I saw an orange dress, and it was Maya and Patrice, and they were sitting like catty corner to each other. And I I just walked in, pulled my chair up from a different table, sat right next to them because those, those were the two that caught my eye. But I mean, again, they they were all beautiful. Uh, Leilin is gorgeous. Um, Vanessa is gorgeous. Vanessa, Vanessa actually works with my ex, so that was kind of weird. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't remember. I met Patricia uh, at the reunion. She's dope. Um, I wish she would have made it through too. Um, she's a beautiful, amazing, intelligent woman. So. You know, it's there were no bad options on the show, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? 
I feel like, uh, you know, some personalities clashed or whatever. But at the end of the day, for the most part, I feel like everybody um, is doing pretty well in life. Um, all of the women were attractive. So it, it was just for me, it was more just about, you know, um, who I got, who I had, uh, who I had good conversation with and who things just felt like they had a natural flow. And so that first conversation with Maya, it just like we clicked. And so it just went from there. And it was the same way with Patrice. Like, that's why they were my top two connections. I agree. All the ladies uh, on the cast are beautiful and seem to be doing very well for themselves. So how did you feel? I know you said you met with Patricia. How did you feel about her getting eliminated before you even had a chance? She and your mixer, you didn't even have a chance to meet her. So how did you feel about that? Um, I, I don't really like the format of the show, honestly. I wish, I wish that one, I wish that they stopped focusing on all the drama as much. I mean, there's going to be drama when you put that many different personalities together, but I wish that wasn't the focus. And I also wish that instead of eliminating somebody every week, they let all 20 people go throughout the whole process and see what relationships form from that. You know what I'm saying? Because the elimination part is what creates the, uh, oh, I got to get rid of this person because they like the same person that I like. And that's corny to me. So um, I, I wish I could have met her. But I mean, again, because of the process, I met some of the dopest people um, that I could have possibly met in Dallas. And so, you know, um, although nothing romantic came of it, you know, I, I'm glad I have them as friends. Absolutely. And I feel like you did. <laughs> You've been saying what we've been talking about for years. Those of us, other content creators like Bell, we've been complaining about this. I've been complaining about this since the beginning. No eliminations, especially that early. Yeah. Let people kind of weed it out because the games are getting a little childish now. <laughs> but, and we got to talk about the games because it, it was ridiculous. Um, oh, we did have a question. Um, JB wanted to know, how long did y'all film this season? Was it really six weeks? Uh started in may and ended in july okay but but the way that they film it like you'll film two dates on the same day and it'll act like it's two different days or um it you'll film multiple dates on the same day and then go two or three days without filming and then uh they'll call you randomly at like seven o'clock they'll be like we need you here at 8 p.m oh, wow. type stuff you know what i'm saying so uh you're buying clothes <laughs> because you can't wear certain stuff on TV, anything with a logo on it. You can't wear it and all this kind of stuff. They got you driving all over the DFW because none, very few scene, scenes were filmed in Fort Worth. Um, so you're driving all over the place. And I live in Garland. And so uh, you, I know you don't know about it, but JV, he know um, anywhere that's in the DFW that's not Garland is far from Garland. So um it, it, and if you work a nine to five, how can you call me with just an hour's notice? I'm wondering. Yeah, like, a lot of entrepreneurs on the show. Um, that's why there's so many entrepreneurs. That's why, why there's so many people that work in IT that work either remote or hybrid and stuff like that. So, it's, um, it's a short period of time, but that that wouldn't work for me. I need some. <laughs> I need a heads up, especially with children. Yeah. You said they knew uh, the show wasn't a Fort Worth. Yes. Yeah. Hell, <laughs> yeah. Me sure, but, well, I, even I knew it wasn't a four four because they kept saying Dallas. I guess they yeah. wanted to switch it up and make it seem like it was different. Yeah, it's just like when they did DC and Potomac or whatever. It's just silly. <laughs> like y'all yeah. still in DC. I don't understand. Yeah. So for I have for what I thought your top connections were initially was Maya, Vanessa, um, Alexis, and Patrice. Did uh -huh. was there anyone else? No, so my my two connections throughout the whole throughout the whole thing were uh, Maya and Patrice, um, Vanessa and I. We had cool conversation, but I mean, as you saw in that episode, uh, I fat fingered an extra number onto her number, and uh, they they made that look real weird too. Like they put weird ass music behind it and all this other kind of stuff. Like they made it seem weird. We were having we were having a good time. Uh, just laughing about it because 
what happened was at the mixer, the I mean the brunch where I met her, you know, as you're going around talking to and meeting everybody, uh, by the time her and her got her and I got to talk, the producer's like, Y'all have like 10 seconds before we're done filming. So just exchange numbers real fast. And so we rushed to exchange numbers. And so like, you know, I just instead of just sending like a confirmation text like, hey, uh lock me in like right there in that moment, I waited like to the end of the night and I didn't see her again till uh like a couple days later. And then that's when, you know, we started talking. But I mean whether or not she was checking for me, like that's that's fine. Um I don't I don't particularly know, but yeah, you know. I was gonna say to me it looked like she might have gave you the wrong number or no like her like y'all not talking for that time caused her to lose that those feelings or potential potentially, plans. but then also her working with my ex kind of uh, <laughs> you know he just works <laughs> I get I, I don't know it can it can be listen, listen it can be real awkward flying on the same plane for a couple of hours with somebody that oh, is dating right. somebody you used to date. okay. yeah. Yeah, that can be a mess. So okay, so you think so? She found that out and was like, "That's probably why." I she told her. I told her. <laughs> it was like it seemed like with Vanessa, as time went by, every time you said something, it was like, "Oh, you're having issues with your family." Like I can't deal with it. I'm like Vanessa, just I just say. I mean, <laughs> but I would I would never want anybody who, uh, like if first of all, I'm not gonna have you carry my burden, right. And then if me carrying my burden is too much for you, then I mean I'm okay with you saying that this is not for you. Like I'm I'm cool with that. I don't I'm not the type to try to convince anybody to want me. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be myself. And if if you rocking with me, cool. If not, cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if y'all are gonna be together, it's not gonna work if they have a problem with you having yeah. issues that happens. But it just I feel like Vanessa girl just <laughs> just say you're not interested. It's fine. What about Alexis? That seemed to have come out of nowhere. It was like y'all weren't talking, and then she was suddenly meeting your friends. And I'm like, I only saw y'all talking once prior to this. So, so Alexis and I. I mean, again, I don't think it was ever anything romantic between her and I. It was more so just uh, we we connected on like basketball. She likes basketball. I played basketball um, when I was significantly younger. Uh, <laughs> And so we connected on that. And so when it came time to like do the whole meet the friends thing, uh, they asked me who I wanted to meet my friends. I named my two connections. They were like, well, it has to be three. And so. <laughs> I guess it's for TV. Yeah. And I mean, and that's no slight to Alexis because I think Alexis is dope. After I had my surgery, she's one of the few people that like actually sent me a care package to make sure I was good. So she's she's dope. That was nice. Now, okay, while we on Alexis, I wasn't really going to talk about it, but how do you feel about mm -hmm. her acting out at the reunion? Um. Okay, so full story, right? So there's been a lot of stuff that's happened behind the scenes um, during during uh, during. I used to play a lot. I, listen, I played in college and I played overseas a little bit. I, I never told anybody I that. I don't know. <laughs> that was just making you look. <laughs> Or no, I, I can I can hoop I can hoop hoop a little bit. I'm just out of shape. I'm just <laughs> but um we believe listen I'm I'm sitting my old I'm sitting my old butt down. You hear me? Um but no so there's a lot of stuff that happened during the show behind the scenes um and then throughout the course of filming the reunion right and so uh all of that built up to the reunion. Now, when we, they had us show up at eight o'clock in the morning for the reunion. We didn't stop filming until two o'clock in the morning, wow. right? And so uh, they gave us like a little small, little something to chew on for breakfast. And then they gave us like hamburgers and French fries for lunch. And then for dinner, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like finger foods or, you know, stuff like that. But what they had uh, an abundance of was liquor. <laughs> mm. And so, you know, you got that that tension that's built up over months 
You have somebody antagonizing you, saying that you're on cocaine and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. And and you're and you're and you're drunk. Yeah. I mean, it's it's gonna blow up. Um that I was very intentional on not drinking that day myself. Like I everybody came if you if you watch the pajama party episode, like I was drunk. Um <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot um, of going on. I was I was drunk, uh, and I mean I'm sure your dad can tell you about his military friends. We we drink a lot, and so um, them not seeing me drink, they were like, "What's going on?" And so I know myself, I know the environment I'm in, I know who's around, and I wish that thumbs up thing would stop. Uh, I know who's around, uh, so I chose not to drink because I knew what would happen if I drank. Um, everybody didn't move like that some some people drank some people drank a lot and it just turned into uh no they really don't even on the dates you just got to sit there and look at the food get cold <laughs> and if you're smart you'll order something to go on your way out but you really can't sit there and eat during the episodes i wouldn't want to be um, on camera anyway <laughs> but they're gonna be yeah. hours on the end yeah so yeah they uh they had us there from eight in the morning to two. I mean, yeah, eight in the morning to two in the morning and paid us two hundred and fifty dollars. So that's I was wondering if y'all got paid two hundred and fifty dollars for a full yeah. so it's it's two hundred and fifty dollars for the for the first episode, five hundred dollars an episode after that, and then two hundred and fifty dollars for the reunion. Okay, even if it's the realty. I don't know if you're supposed to share that, but thank you. <laughs> the show's over now. Yeah, that's not enough. Now, I will say, but then who's the blame? Is Alexis to blame for drinking when she's fully grown? Or I mean, I listen, first of all, food? first of all, I am nobody to judge anybody else's actions. However, I know what I chose to do, and that was to stay sober because I also know that um, I have I have put a lot of work in on myself to change uh the type of stuff that I used to do, but I also know it's still in me to where I will put hands on people and I just don't want to be in that situation. Oh. So I chose not to drink and just, you know, stay to myself and talk to the people that I that I talk to. Yeah, because I mean, we just want to see y'all just catching up. Um, it seemed like there was more drama going on as far as like between the cast and actual love connections. Do you think at that point- sure. like no love connection. It was just a simple numbers game. People just trying to stay on the show. What do you think? I mean, connections going on. No, there there was actually. I mean, two couples came out of it. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and Kira, I never said Alexis didn't have a choice. I'm just saying that uh, the the way the day was set up and kind of some of the things that. Uh, production did did not help you know what i'm saying like you know it, it's your responsibility to um react a certain way or you know control your your reaction but the the situation the the environment that you're placed in like that that was outside of our control um but no there's there's two i don't know everybody's situation you know what I'm saying? And again, I'm not really one that likes to, you know, speak on other people's business. But, you know, Justin and Mika, I love them together. They look really, really happy. And, you know, they're both dope as hell to me. Um, I love Mika. Justin cool as a fan. So um, I'm happy for them. I'm, you know, at least somebody got something good out of this whole uh, thing. Looking um, a little fierce for a while. I didn't think. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't um, think it was that. Yeah, but I mean, you had you had a bunch of people that you know wanted to wanted to be stars of a show instead of actually focus on what was important, and um, it is what it is. You know, I I hope everybody, you know, gets what they're gets what they were looking for. Yeah, yeah, and they want to talk about it. Group chat, gay, the group test. See what what was going on with that? It's like even when it was explained, I'm, I still felt like. Well, did you did you see it? Did you read it? I didn't read it. I just listened to what Tommy read. <laughs> so I know Uh-oh. people were doing and talking about different things, and I just heard so many different so, stories. I how did you get thrown in the mix? 
So uh, after the first mixer, all the guys, you know, we created a group chat and it was supposed to be uh, just us like chopping it up, uh, hanging out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it devolved into um, a couple of the guys saying, you know, uh, who needs to go this, that and the third. And I mean, uh, I don't know if you follow Miss Monica, girl, girl with the T. Um, she's she's posted it um because i sent it to her uh <laughs> but <laughs> over there as soon as it's um, <laughs> yeah so you know another one of the guys created it and then turned around and said that i uh <laughs> that i did that i was behind it but that's not my personality um i i did speak in there and you know i said anybody who's not here for the right reason can go and uh you know i said yeah. that i didn't have a connection with such and such so they can go you know what i'm saying but it was never i never moved i personally never moved in a way that you know uh we all got to get this person out of here um basically you know if you weren't my connection you could have went i didn't care um <laughs> so, so you well were not in cahoots y'all were not no no Gotta, no, now, no. Like, you listen, listen, the, the, the texts have been made public. Y'all can go and read them <laughs> and see the truth. It is not, it is not what it was portrayed to be. And now it's being said that they were doctored. So, you know, who mm -hmm. has time for that? But it is what it is. Um, again, I, <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> said he was trying to get rid of the guys. That's 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 what one of the dudes in the group chat said. <laughs> Oof. That's I'm hilarious. Cringy. Uh, <laughs> but do you feel like yeah. I? It, I mean, that's when it began to feel inauthentic when LeBron kind of exposed it. Do you feel like he just did that simply to get you out of the way so he could get to Maya? Or I mean, I. Listen, I don't know what I can't speak for the man. It just looked real funny when you pretend to be my homeboy and then turn around and do that. Yeah, because the waited almost to the end, like he had it in his back pocket, and then and it, it seemed like it worked, <laughs> like it was right on time. Uh, n well, not really, right? So at the getaway, I was I was dealing with a lot. There were multiple instances where I tried to leave the show, mm -hmm. and the getaway was one of them. So I was almost another Glenn. On the first episode, because uh, my mom called me on my way to um, filming that day and told me my dad was having emergency surgery to remove a tumor from his spine. So I uh, was just going to take my truck and go to San Antonio. And my mom told me to stay and just do what I agreed to do. Cool. Um, the episode where Vanessa, uh, Patrice, Alonzo and I uh, talked about the whole phone number thing. My mom called me and told me about something else going on with my dad. And they asked me if I wanted to film. And I was like, not really. But again, my mom was like, you should stay. You you made a commitment and your dad's not going anywhere right now. So just stay. So I did. Uh, and then at the getaway, um, it was just a culmination of things. Like, I don't like being in the mix of drama and stuff like that. Like, I've, I've worked really hard to try to turn my life around. And so being, being blindsided with that on top of the stuff that was going on with my dad, I was ready to go. And so it, it came to a point to where Maya uh, came to my room and tried to get me to come out and be social. And I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. Um, and then Patrice came to my room and tried to get me to come out and convince me to stay, try to, you know, talk to me about what was going on so I could feel better and come out and be social. And production kicked her out of the room and kind of like berated me in my room and was telling me I'm being selfish and, you know, wow. it's not fair to the audience. It's not fair to my connections. Um, I'm self-sabotaging, you know, let the process run itself out, all this other kind of stuff. And so then they made me, uh, they were like, you should, uh, if, if this is really important to you, you should talk about it on camera. And that's when they had me go sit out by the fire with Patrice and have the conversation for the third time that night, which is why it looked how it did. Like I was wiping my eyes laughing like this is dumb. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, cause that was my third time talking about it. So, um, I tried to leave a few times and, uh, so I don't know how much I could speak on it, but I'll tell you that, uh, I was not 
supposed to go home that day. I was supposed to make it to the bridge. I'll tell you that. I won't tell you how I know. I'll just tell you that I know. Yeah, I mean, everybody's been on <laughs> the streets been talking. I did hear that Maya did not want you to go, but we don't, you know, you know, production plays a part of who gets eliminated as well. And I thought around yeah. being simply for it, not, you know, I don't. I like everybody on the cast. I thought around with Sam because you know he was bringing the drama, the entertainment part. Um, how did yeah, you know? Um, my dad just got home last week from an inpatient facility. Uh, he stood up and took 15 steps for the first time in almost two years. So he's he's slowly getting better, slowly moving in the right direction. Now, had you left, because we know everybody can't leave, would you have gotten fined? Would there have been consequences because you signed a contract? Are you? Okay. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I just know that they heavily pressure you once you mention you don't want to go. Yeah, and then it's having to reenact the scene and discuss something again and again, I'm sure can weigh on you. Yeah. Now, how yeah, did you, sure. you look back and you saw Patrice was crying because you left? How did that make Um. You? So... I, I, I knew she cried before I even um, went home that day because um, we spoke after after I went and packed my stuff. Um, like I would not leave without talking to her. Like they were trying to get me to like get in the car and go. Um, they had one of the production staff drive me back home and I told them that I wasn't leaving without talking to her. So we talked and she was mad at me because um, like when they told me I wasn't ready to love, I just went straight to my room and uh, started packing my stuff, and I didn't like hug her or say bye or anything like that. But I, you know, we talked. Okay. Now it feels Thank like everybody. I don't know if that's just her, she says in her nature. Or she's just you know, an empath. Do you feel like in that moment you felt closer to her than Maya? Because we it seemed like there was a shift. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a shift. Um, I was very open and honest about the everything throughout the whole process, even to the point to where production told me I need to um, give everybody the same type of uh, energy because I was pulled to the side and it was like, it's very evident on camera. Like when you're not interested in somebody, you're just being nice. Um, and so, uh, I mean, there was no like top connection between the two. Um, I had, I, I felt like I had a really good connection with both of them and it wasn't, it wasn't a like, I like this person more than this person because I don't really get attached really fast. And so it's just a matter of I'm getting to know them both on the same level. And, um, you know, the same conversations were had um, and just however it looked on camera is just how it looked on camera. But um, my connection was the same with both of them, really. And it definitely seemed like production played a part. Now, for me, it felt like Patrice made more sense because of the fact that you guys had children, were married over Maya. So I was wondering, like, what what did you and Maya have in common that you really connected on? Maya seems like she's just nice to whomever and the same with you. So it's was like, was there a connection? Was it a numbers game? Because now when I start to watch, I don't know what's real and what's fake anymore because of how the show has transitioned over the years. So, all right, first of all, I, I suck at dating, like, more than one person i'm not i'm not uh i'm not the type of person that likes splitting my attention between people so i struggled with that off the rip mm -hmm. and so um when when i'm trying to get to know you or there's somebody i'm interested in like i like to focus in and actually like get to know you you know what i'm saying and so um i did the best that i could to try to like give both of them the same amount of time and attention mm -hmm. to the point to where like if I wasn't at work or you know um you know just living my regular life I was on the phone with one of them like for hours mm -hmm. um and what's really important to me in a person more so than physically is like I'm at peace right now like my my life is super peaceful I grew up um getting myself in all kind of mess um and then you know being in the army doing what my job is like I, i'm always in chaotic situations because that's just part of the job but um my home life i wanted to be peaceful and i don't want anybody in my life that's going to disturb my peace and both of them i just got that 
they they just have calm like energy you know i don't want anybody that's going to cause waves in my pond you know what i'm saying and so i i got that from both of them now granted both of them are at different points in their life um they've had different life experiences but that was the thing that attracted me to both of them like it was they just both had like real peaceful kind um like warm personalities and so that's that's where i was with that i completely agree you cannot pay for peace peace it's almost like you just don't even want to date because i don't want my peace to serve Definitely. But <laughs> I completely understand that. Uh, as far as that was something I was about to say, it slipped my mind. But do you <laughs> feel like there was a competition between um, anyone, like the other? Can I, I didn't really see Maya have another like strong connection outside of you to, until Lauren came around. But did you feel yourself competing with Alonzo and then when Chaz came into the picture no. at the very end? No, I don't. Because to me, none of it was a competition. Like, again, if you like me, you like me. If you don't like me, you don't like me. Like, I, I didn't go into it like, oh, this is my person. It's going to be my person. Nobody else's. And so I never thought of it as a competition. It was, hey, you know, if if I meet somebody and that ends up being my person, cool. If not, like, whatever, you know, like I, I didn't have any. I didn't handcuff anybody or try to. <laughs> convince nobody to choose me and how about the exes did that make you feel uncomfortable at all a lot of people don't like uh, they, there's a ex aspect in the, the dates on the show no nah, i'm okay so i'm in obviously you know between the army and doing comedy i'm in uncomfortable positions all the time so it is what it is like um we just had a conversation now in real life would i ever sit down and have you know, dinner or drinks with somebody's ex. No, that's crazy. Like nobody does that. Um, unless, you know, they have kids together and I'm gonna be meeting kids and they want to meet me. Like that's understandable. But to just on a whim, like, hey, so you know what you're getting yourself into, meet their ex. Like, nah, I'll I'll figure that out on my own because your experience with her isn't gonna be my experience with her. Like everybody gets something different. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Well, so. no, that's right. Listen, <laughs> what happened with y'all is with y'all. But like selling so there's kids involved, so which is good. At least it sounds like you're open to also dating women with kids or yeah, for sure. That would be crazy for me to be like, you have kids, yeah. It happens, be yeah, you'd be surprised. And every time I hear it, I'm like, What? It's like yeah, I that's, that's crazy. baby daddy drama. Like, wait a minute, you had a couple <laughs> months of your children. That's that's crazy talk. Yeah, and definitely. So now, you know, we got to the reunion. Is there anything, because we didn't see you a lot, is there anything you wish you would have had time to say or wish would have been shown or anything at all, like during the reunion or during the time on the show that you wanted to come out? <laughs> no. Uh, they Trust me, when I say they tried to involve me and in stuff on the reunion, I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. Um, they tried to get me to go in the confessional booth and talk. I was, I was like, no, nah, I don't have nothing to say. Um, I... I'm not here for the drama, you know what I'm saying? So I don't, I'm not about to feed into it. Now what's funny is I am the one to call Leron the snake in that question. But I heard you say that when it was, was about to tell someone that was, that was funny. That was funny. That's why if you see me, I was waiting, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it to like, you know, come my way. Yeah. And then it probably, it probably would have turned into a whole different episode, but it, did, it didn't go that way. And I mean, that's for the best. Uh, Definitely. Well, I mean, you have but, people on the side. Like <laughs> Alexis knew she didn't say it. She still was standing on standing on business. Like, well, I, that's because he did her dirty. You know what I'm saying? Throughout throughout the course of the thing, he did her mad dirty. And I mean, it sucks, but it's over now. We yeah. trying to move past it. Like this is literally going to be my last interview about this show. Like I'm not talking about it no more. Outside of being on stage, so. Um. I'm just trying to put it all behind me. I gave you some material, and I mean, it was filmed a while ago, so I can certainly understand. But you mm -hmm. know, we got to talk about what, what we did here, you say, which everybody wants to know. Did, did, did Patrice make it to the fair? Is yeah. Patrice the one? So, um, the Patrice thing. So, um, Patrice and I did make plans to go to the fair. And um, a day or two before we were supposed to go to the fair, one of my best friends for 15 years, just did not wake up. He passed away. And so 
it like messed me up really bad because we're in our you know 30s you're not supposed to just not wake up and with everything that was going on uh i just i just took a step back from everything and everybody and we just never reconnected and 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 that's fine i have no hard feelings for her i think patrice is dope and um you know i'm she's she's not who uh has my attention at this time um but wish her the best (laughs) but she did y'all did have a real genuine connection it seems so yeah i really i really rock with her well that's good now who do you think had the most drama do you think it was the because the women had a lot of stuff going on and the men do you think there was more drama between the women or more drama between the men it was just drama filled um i don't know uh, like I said, I really tried to stay out of it. Seems like um, you did. When, when, when my name was brought into it, you know, I tried to shut it down. But um, I can't, I can't really say who had the most drama. I mean, I heard a lot. I mean, I, I was never the type of person. I'm still not the type of person that's gonna run and go tell everybody's business. But I've heard a lot. Like everything that was said about everybody on the show, for the most part, I've heard it. You know, um, but it's not my business to tell. So there was there was a lot of drama. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that men had more drama or the women had more drama. There was just too much unnecessary drama to the point to where um, we we mentioned to production like this is not what y'all told us the show was going to be about. And one of the producers was like, when is anything ever what you're told it's going to be? Wow. So that kind of like changed my whole perception of the show. Um, and then after the whole uh, blow up at the reunion, you know, they sat us down and told us how embarrassing our behavior was. And, you know, this isn't uh, housewives or basketball wives or any of that other kind of stuff when they're the ones that generate this drama. So uh, I think the the drama could 100, can't 100 percent be avoided. But I think that it's focused on, and so it causes people to do it more. Definitely. Uh, whether it be men or women. Yeah, it seemed like so there's a little bit of everything. People wanting to get fame, like you said, production playing a part, the alcohol didn't help. But I mean, it, I will say, Tons of it, it seemed like you, even with you know group chat date, <laughs> it seems like for the most part, you stayed out of it. So Listen, that's, that's, that's me in real life. Like, what y'all. Like, sometimes I can be quiet and awkward. That's me in real life. Sometimes I'm just a clown and I'm just laughing and joking with my friends. But 100% of the time, I stay out the way in my, my business. Yeah, I watched the reunion back. And then I think when Will and Ron was going at it, somebody asked you a question. He was like, I don't want nothing to do with that. So I'm like, no. Well, they cut a lot of that out. I said a whole lot more. But they cut, they, <laughs> they cut a lot of what I said out of that because um i got kind of heated at that point but you know it just wouldn't have lined up with my demeanor the rest of the the rest of the thing so i'm sure that's why they cut it out yeah but i pretty much i pretty much at that point was just like you know i don't like when people lie on me don't put my name and stuff keep my name out your mouth like just that normal yeah simple stuff you know well, especially uh, after sitting there all day and only getting paid 250 dollars, i'd have been frustrated as well yeah but you know, I'm definitely glad that you came over on this side and gave us your final interview. Do you feel like yeah, sure. Ben was a production plant, or do you think that that was an authentic <laughs> cast member that was supposed to be there? I really don't know. So, if if he was a plant, they played the long game on that. You, you know, because mm-hmm. we literally waited three hours to start filming, waiting on him to show up. Wow. So <laughs> if if he was just a plant. They they played the long game. That they waited a long time to have that like show itself. You know it's what I'm saying? Thing because we didn't care. <laughs> like we the people did not want to see Glenn. We really didn't I mean hi Glenn. We really didn't care at all. Like they could cut I don't that still I still I still don't know that man from a hole in a wall. Like I don't Oh, so when y'all I doing don't. cast events and, and linking up with each other, Glenn is still a no show. Don't let time I don't care. listen. <laughs> I wouldn't even necessarily say cast events. I only hang out 
with a couple of people from the cast. I don't I don't hang out with everybody. It's like and it's like a couple of the dudes I'm cool with. Um and then all of the women I'm cool with. So it's it's there there will probably never be a time where you see the entire cast together again. That's a shame. Cause even Tommy had to call y'all out. And Tommy didn't call anybody out on much. But he said y'all are not friends. Like get it together. Everybody's not gonna get along, especially uh in it seemed like a, a tense work environment. So I'm glad you yeah. made it through. you made it almost, I mean, they almost tried to let you go. I was glad that you made it to the end. I I I was real glad that you made I was, it to the end. I was ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was ready to go. I was I was exhausted uh mentally and uh emotionally. So I was I was tired. Your mental health has to come first, but it's like a few people left already, so I knew they weren't gonna let you go easy. Like exactly. there's you seem honest, genuine. Everything that we saw on screen it seems to be coming on, across now. So it's given authentic. And we definitely appreciate mm. you did some some goodness on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else that you have going on? I know you have a few shows coming up. Is there anything else you have going on that we can support and try to even if we're mm. Listen, just follow just follow me on my Instagram. Um my, my show dates have been really choppy because of the army and all the schools that I've been going to. Um because the world is starting to do crazy stuff. And so they gotta get us ready to be across the water. Um but follow me on my Instagram, Will Mosley Comedy. And um as show dates come up, I'll definitely post them. Um uh, I'll probably be with a bigger name comedian. So, you know, you'll see me, then you'll see somebody way more famous than me. But um, just make sure you follow me and, you know, holler at me. Let me know you follow me from here and I'll follow you back. Okay, nice, definitely. And I will, if you're catching a replay, put the Instagram in the description and I'll post it on my community tab as well. So please support, support. We want William to do the absolute best that he can do. We need to get Thank some Thank you, I appreciate people. that. Would you do reality TV? <laughs> um, I would rather eat a jean jacket wrapped in barbed wire. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Not, not doing even that. a different type of show. Um, I okay. So I have a friend. He did uh, Naked and Afraid twice, oh. and um, I, I have to, I have to get, I have to get this back right in order to be naked on TV. I can't be out here looking like I look right now be naked on TV, but I would consider that because I, I love outdoors. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Like I said, I grew up in the city, but I'm low key a country boy. So um, I'm, I'm cool with being outside. That's my life in the army anyways. Um, so I would do it and he got paid significantly more than we got paid for this. So mm -hmm. would I do like a dating reality show? Absolutely not. Like I no, absolutely not. Um, there's other things I want to say, but I don't want to burn any bridges right now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think production uh, already had enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, but would I would I do this do this type of reality again? No, absolutely not. Um, uh, but I I don't know. Whatever opportunities come up, there's some stuff in the works. Um, uh, I just gotta figure out what what's best for me you know i want to make my next move my best move so i don't i don't want to ever do anything that's gonna not align with my morals and you know have me looking crazy because this was close enough <laughs> you did not look crazy, and you look fine you can go on naked and afraid like you see i mean we don't want to disrespect the, the potential future misses <laughs> <laughs> so, so the ladies was fine you look fine it's all, <laughs> all naked you. and afraid Oh. Uh, did Tommy keep his promise about working together? Um, we have not spoken since the reunion, but we have a lot of mutual friends and I have his assistant's phone number. So it's more so um, now. OK, here's the thing. I I'm not a I'm not a somebody that headlines major shows. Right. I'm a I'm a feature or I'm a host. You know, I'm one of the first two people you see at a show. Um, I have the phone number to a lot of like big me matter of fact i'm missing a show tonight um i really wish that would stop do you see that am i am i seeing this by myself <laughs> I 
Like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Um, but, I you were doing I, look, I don't. I don't know what that is. Um, Kyle works for I, the shows. Uh, but uh, my mentor is actually in town, and um, had I not been doing this, I would have went there. But um, yeah, I have the phone number to a lot of bigger name comedians. I just don't call them and ask for anything. Like I don't like asking for anything. I want to make it off, you know, my own stuff. So uh sometimes you you'll see me out there though. I feel like you have that connection. You do. I saw Tommy is going and doing a little tour. I don't know. I don't know if he's going on tour. Tommy's Tommy stays working and he works with a comedian. The comedian that features for him, I've worked with before. Mm -hmm. Um so like I said, we run in the same circles. He's from Houston, you know. Yeah. So um, we we know a lot of the same people, but you'll see me, um, especially when this army stuff slows down a little bit more, and I can start being more consistent like I used to. Um, you'll see me. Um, I'll just be in the small print for now. <laughs> Don't have me sliding up in Tommy's DMs. <laughs> nah, you ain't got to do that. you ain't got to do that. Yeah, you ain't got to. But you will you will see me soon. I got some I got some stuff working. You know what I'm saying? I'm. I got an agency that hit me up, and we're supposed to see what comes. I'm gonna see what comes from that. So we'll see. Okay. Well, we know you got something in the works with Sassy. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me not. We've read. Don't do like, that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> sorry, Red. I, I don't. I don't want to be a part of any slander. He didn't. I don't want to be attached to none of that. That's what I said, and the people said from last season. But last season <laughs> over with. <laughs> but we still will support y'all because we want, you know, especially you want our fellow comedians. We want y'all to win. So appreciate that. Appreciate that. And and even if it's not me, please support your local comedy club, your local comedians, please, because it's hard out here. Like for a long time, before you start getting paid, you getting paid chicken strips and beer. Like that's how they pay you at. The you know, comedy spots. So, and they uh, take support your local comedians. We'll do, we'll do. And if I, I need to get down to Texas anyway. I want to go to Houston, so I don't know if you're gonna be performing out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be out there. I, I go to Houston a lot. See, and it's still coming. See, so. we can't go on naked and afraid. Tell us your <laughs> IG one more time. Thank you, Will Mosley Comedy on Instagram. Uh, my. Twitter, if you want to follow that and see some of the dumb stuff that I say, is not Will Mosley because they keep banning me on there. Um, and Will Mosley comedy on TikTok as well. Okay. And definitely we'll check out the same. Yeah. Do you have a, um, a YouTube or anything else that we. My YouTube hasn't been updated in probably like a year. I need to get better at that. Uh, that's that's going to be my next, my next step. Um, I need to start doing that, but I don't really put out a whole lot of new stuff because I need y'all to come see me in person. If I post everything online, y'all ain't gonna come see me in person. <laughs> you gonna get that so, online bag? Take take yeah. the money, take the TikTok video. No, they they demonetize me too much. I listen. I'm on my third Instagram and probably my fifth Twitter. I'm Lord. <laughs> never. <mind. laughs> you they, can please. Listen, they sick of me. We can't have you getting demonetized, but <laughs> I'll say don't don't make me have to harass you now to post some video, post some content. No, they I have I know I have two that are on my reels that are pinned on my reels, so you can go and watch those. Um, but I'll start posting more just for you, I promise. Okay. I will. And I will repost on my community tab out. If y'all missed the names, I will post some on my community tab. Be sure to check it out. Is there anything else that you want to get out there before we go? No, that's it. Uh, shout out to you. Thank you for having me. Shout out for Ryan for setting this up. And uh, thank y'all for watching. Stay blessed. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for the, re the replay game. We'll see y'all later. Bye. All right.